So this is version 4 now on how to describe graphs. So I've listed here the common graphs that you're likely to see. The first thing you need to do is follow this sentence structure. So if there's x is uh, time down here, let me write. Won't let me write, so I'm going to have to use the mouse, I'm sorry. Uh, so time here and um, this might be, uh, could be anything. Uh, it's, it's not going to be, could be distance if it's physics. Uh, it could be a number of something like in biology, uh, but we'll uh, just give it there as um, volume or something. Uh, and so as time increases, the volume increases in a linear, uh, positive linear relationship. If the graph looks slightly different, it goes through zeros, use directly proportional. If it's going down, say negative linear. If you have uh, a, a curve like this, you say it increases at an increasing rate. Uh, if it curves like this and then reaches a maximum, you say it increases at a decreasing rate until a maximum is reached. Uh, if it decreases like this, you say it's decreasing uh, at a decreasing rate until a minimum is reached. Uh, this, these two are a little special, let you read those yourself. This would be more for enzymes and other things, uh, titrations and other things. Uh, so I'll leave those two. Uh, for some more special specialized cases. Uh, so once you've finished that, so you don't just say as time increases, um, volume increases. You always say uh, the second bit of how that increase occurs. You can see it's quite different, or it could be decreasing, uh, which is quite, and could be quite different. You also need to give uh, point two in your second sentence, give the equation of the line that the, the Excel has uh, spat out for you. Um, also give examples as well. Uh, obviously for here you'd want to talk about the minimum, here you'd want to talk about the range where it rapidly increases, here you definitely want to mention the maximum, uh, you'd also uh, could mention the range as well. Uh, so there's many uh, instances where the second sentence where you're going to give some data to show that relationship. Uh, the third thing you want to do and the last thing you want to do is uh, tell me how good it is. So uh, hopefully there's error bars on there. Uh, and then with the points here, the error bars will in, uh, encompass the line of best fit. If they don't, that's a point to mention that your um, precision is an issue. Um, and then you can also talk about R squared, uh, which tells you here point seven to point uh, nine nine is one website. Um, and that sort of tells you how well the line models the data. Uh, and so obviously if your points are like this, uh, this is not good. Uh, whereas if your points are like this, the line does model the data much, much better. And so R squared will be much better here than it is over here. Uh, and so talk about that as well. So uh, bare minimum would be three sentences, possibly more. Always start with as, the, um, as X increases, Y increases, and then tell me how that increase occurs. Second thing, give me some data to back that up. Uh, and third thing, talk about um, how well that uh, line of best fit does model that data uh, and then uh, if the ex if the question uh, asks for explain you can have to use scientific theories uh, and so this is for an exam uh, if you're doing a uh, student experiment write-up then uh, this this thing would just be a paragraph uh, possibly you might want to put the R squared into a separate paragraph talking about precision and inaccuracy uh, and just leave the relationship with the scientific explanation as a separate paragraph. Um, and similarly, for your research investigation reports, uh, you'd also put uh, this first uh, and second and fourth sentence in one paragraph for each of your data sets. Uh, you might want to put the third in there or leave it as a separate paragraph. Okay, hope that's helpful.